They say he has grit. I wanted a man with grit. If you're looking for trouble, I'll accommodate you. Mr. Rat doesn't pay any attention to me. Fill your hand, you son of a... True Grit, in half an hour on BBC Two. Baby sister, I was born game, and I intend to go out that way. In uh, 25 tests that he's played in between the two countries, and that now equals Hugh Trumbull. Trumbull's record of 141 wickets in only 31 tests. He took those between 1890 and 1903-4, so another record falls, but uh, more important in the immediate circumstances, England's captain falls for 14. And England are 18 for two. It was an excellent delivery, this pitched on the off stump. He had to play at it, and it just left him off the seam. And Terry Alderman made that catch look very, very easy. So the expression on David Gower's face, rather reflective of England's position. straight through him and Gower almost looks as though he didn't see that one don't think he's very happy about the light he certainly wasn't very happy about that delivery and this one bounced and went straight through him just over the corner of the off stump Boycott has taken the precaution of wearing one of these uh, new patented arm guards. And a very wise precaution it is. Been uh, a few batsmen over the years been struck on that forearm playing forward or trying to take evasive action. It's uh, darting back pretty sharply, but. No boycott uh, didn't play his drug. It's a question of whether or not the ball would have hit the stumps. Can be out, not playing a shot. And fairly dangerous to do that. But I think just missing the off stump. Batting for David Gare, and now he's off the mark. There's uh, slip fielders there waiting for the touch from David Gare. Man at third slip is Terry Alderman. He's already taken a catch in that position for the right hander, Brearley, this morning. On his right, at uh, second slip, Alan Border, and at first slip, Graham Wood. And then away on his left, John Dyson. And the man going around there now is Raymond Bright. He's going across to leg slip. delivery this from Dennis Lilly and really if England are going to have any chance they've got to cash in on the bad ball they've got to hit it for four if they're going to get out of this game and throwing there from Trevor Chappell and a fine shot from David Gower. 
Chapman. That was very well bowled, but my word, it did cut a long way off the seam. Alan Border safely took it there at slip. I reckon that must have pitched around about middle and leg and finished up outside off stump. Uh, David Gower has gone for nine, 37 for three now. Excellent piece of bowling from Terry Alderman. But I'm not too sure there's very much Gower could have done about that. But that's close, yes. I'm afraid he has to go LBW again. Second time in the match, Mike Gatting, and Alderman has struck again. He removed Gower. Now he's taken Gatting, and England 41 for four. Mike Gatting felt it might have been going down the leg side. The keeper's fairly well in line with the leg stump. That's usually quite a good guide. And in uh, six innings, so far in this test series, Mike Gatting has been out over W five times. The latest one there on your scorecard. W to Alderman for one. Peter Willie, the man coming in to join Boycott. Just a little bit short there. It's a nice take or a nice stop by Skipper Kim Hughes. That's good over from Alderman. Seemed to me to put uh, even more shoulder into it in that over, and he was really hitting the pitch hard, running up strongly. Before. Forty-seven on the board now, and boycott goes to eighteen. off the mark but for one instant he must have wondered where it was going yes well not much of a shot this he's played it right away from his body as it is he managed to get a thick top edge Brilliant bit of batting by Jeff Boycott this morning. Four runs, the first hook stroke of the innings. Certainly the first middle one. Not absolutely off the middle, perhaps, but well enough to get four and to give the spectators, the England supporters amongst them, something to smile about. It's four runs, very fine glance, the shout came from Lily, who thought uh, the ball had got through Willie's defence. And here it's a fairly straight delivery. And I would think glanced off the inside edge in front of the middle and leg stump. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. That was glanced off the stumps. Safely away for four. Very similar to the stroke with which Willie got off the mark when he was facing Terry Alderman. And quite safe, almost deliberately hitting it away over slips. And getting across there and hitting it high, well over the slips. And that, uh, in fact, brings up a 50 partnership. Between these two, it's a good uh, 
fight back by England, but they still have a very long way to go. Shot. It's gone like a rocket. <laughs> Great shot. It's really uh, very strong, Peter Willey. Uh, you won't see anything better struck or harder hit than this. Really was a tremendous shot. How well he got over there and right on top of it. Superb strike. So, in the air, that one, but still a beautiful stroke from Peter Willey to bring up the 100 for England. 102 for four now, and Willie has gone to 31. Splendid stroke, that. Beautifully placed. Now, that is really good thinking. A superb piece of captaincy, a magnificent piece of bowling, and Peter Willie has gone. That's one of the best pieces of tactical thinking I've seen in a long time. I saw John Snow get Ian Chappell at the Sydney Cricket Ground one day in 1971. And here Lily has got Peter Willey, caught by Dyson. And it really was a splendid piece of cricket. Peter Willey played very well, but there's no doubt there was a little bit of out generalship there very very good piece of out cricket by australia there it is mind you the delivery was tremendous because it climbed that little bit higher and and got peter willie a little bit tucked up and he really only chipped it rather than hit it to that short third man but very very fine performance by the australian side there and what a nice way for Dennis Lilly to become the greatest ever wicket-taker in the history of Anglo-Australian tests. Goes past uh, Huey Trumbull's record of 141. Applause from Ian Botham as he comes out. Applause for Lilly. Batsman out today, England having started at six for one wicket. Brearley's out for 14, Gower nine, Gatting one, and Willie 33. 105 for five. Let's over Dennis Lilly will remember for a long time a tactical ploy that came off sometimes they don't when they do it's a magnificent feeling both of those quandary will be is he to play his natural game which we saw on saturday Some delightful dashing stroke play or is he to stick around with jeffrey boycott shot Alderman pitching up again inviting him to drive and Ian Botham needs no second invitation beautiful stroke this foot there perfectly through the ball four runs all the way Second invitation accepted in the air this time, and it may not go all the way. Dawson catching up with it just inside the boundary. And 
that's a perfectly played stroke. No doubt about getting on top of that one. And that's again beautifully timed. It was backward a square, but it's four runs nonetheless. this young man has to do really is to harness his talent a bit time that beautifully just went behind square for four 126 for five then boycott steadily on to 42 and both of them now 19 So, me and both of them having that little bit of luck that everybody needs on this pitch, and also that he didn't seem to have when he was skippering the side. There's a big gap there, should be two. Dyson, the fielder. Reluctant lever of the crease. Alderman getting the vital breakthrough for Australia. And he does not look very happy with that, but that's partly, I'm sure, because he's not put a foot wrong. And really never looked like missing the ball at all. But he is out LBW for 46 after 215 minutes of superb defence. Very similar to the Gatting dismissal, this one. But, uh, in fact, the pad literally covering all three stumps. Anything a little bit straighter than the Mike Gatting ball. Oh, and a rather soft dismissal, but very well bowled. The man placed there for it, and Ray Bright making no mistake, a simple catch. Lifting a bit, and Bob Taylor sometimes inclined to pop the ball up in that area. Becomes the seventh man out, and Alderman's fourth victim. Rather disappointed with himself. Bob Taylor making that early move forward, and Terry Alderman's whacked it in at him and he's popped it straight to Ray Bright if you're doing that the only way to get out of it is to let it hit you put on a nice big chest pad and let it hit you that's a rather grisly dismissal well, it makes England 135 for 7 and it's beginning to look very much like an innings victory for Australia with uh, a free day for them tomorrow. But you can never be too certain of anything in this game. And uh, Graham Dilley, who's held them up quite often in this series with the bat, coming out to join Ian Botham. And Alderman enjoying another successful day. He's kept going remarkably well. And he's just picked up the wickets often enough to keep him fresh. Dilly off the mark straight away. three if he wants three. Dilly will look for four. When 
49 for 7. 6 for 1 wicket when they started today. Then Breedy was out for 14. Gower 9. And Gatting 1. Willie 33. And Taylor 1. Botham's 27 not out. Dilly 10 not out. Here's Alderman. Four. It's a good shot too. Smashed away to the left hand of cover. Four to Alderman, three to Lily. Lawson is bowling now from the Kirkster lane end. Doesn't yet have a wicket. And he's got four more to go on to uh, his run aggregate there. Could hardly hit a cover drive any better than that. This is what we call flat batting it. The foot, you don't put the foot over, you put your foot up the leg stump and flat bat it through the covers. Very effective. the century maker of this match 102 he made in the Australian innings of 401 for 9 declared I suppose would uh, come into the reckoning for man of the match the award uh, being presented in this uh, third Cornhill test by Fred Truman oh, well stopped Great piece. <laughs> well, that's bad luck. Bad luck. It was a lovely shot. But a superb piece of feeling to get to it. Extraordinary delivery that was. I think it must have flicked his um, trousers or his hip on the way through. it did just flick the sweater on the way through to Rod Marsh of it single and it was to be the single from the last ball to give both of them the strike the throw was from Trevor Chapel. no one had time to get round to back up Alderman was going to the stumps at the bowler's end and Marsh couldn't quite reach it both of them was in anyway Dilly was the one who was in danger it needed Marsh to take that and then return it if he had been able. That little tumbling turn there. A little one and a half with Pike from Rodney. And uh, it all resulted in four runs to Bethel. 51 runs still needed to avoid an innings defeat. Uh, but of course, should they get the 51, 
Australia have 10, indeed 11 batsmen who would apparently be more than capable of knocking off the run. So it's Lily with the first ball after tea. And oh, what a splendid shot. Very wide, very well pitched up. And Graham Dilly continuing his successful policy before tea. And as we were saying, if there's a little bit of wit, this young man gives it the full treatment. As we said before tea, the well-known flat batter. Oh, splendid shot. And that brings up the 50 partnership. And it's come in only 39 minutes. And well might uh, Ian Botham say to Graham Dilly, well played. Beaten him, four more. Well, the Headingley crowds of the last few days have not had a great deal to chair in the way of batsmanship, and certainly not in the way of English batsmanship. This is really a most remarkable shot. <laughs> it's almost as though he lifts it up there. And that looked as though it had to be four runs off the inside edge. And it's the second time he's made out of this world stop. This really is a brilliant piece of wicket keeping. He's on the way down the offside and over he goes. Certain four runs saved there. He's a tremendous performer these days. Beautiful stroke, beautiful stroke. And the, if the other one was unorthodox, that was uh, a classic cut. Well, whatever anybody may feel about Ian Botham and uh, the rights or wrongs of being, his being captain, surely there isn't any doubt that he is looking a freer and more simply more carefree young player, and he has had a great match. Just in case anybody in Australia is getting worried or anybody in England over optimistic, the weather forecast for tomorrow is good. Oh, he's found the gap with no trouble at all. Another tremendous blow through the covers. And round the wicket or over the wicket, they're coming all alike to Graham Dilly at the moment. And that now is his highest test score for England. 39 not out. Action replay from the last over. And he brings up the 200 to a great cheer from this uh, Yorkshire crowd who are relieved to see the home team at least putting up a fight here. blow and not quite where he intended but it brings him his 50 nonetheless the second 50 of the match and that broad smile conveying the old sense of enjoyment. And of a brilliantly talented, carefree cricketer with a fairly meaty inside edge on his back. His 50 in the first innings came off 50 balls. This one has come off 57 balls in 111 minutes. And as with his first innings, he's hit eight fours. Well, 
pulled himself around there. himself at this didn't get his foot across but it didn't matter he really crashed that through we've seen some fine strokes fine strokes from these two safely over the top of Hughes's head Bit of a risky blow that, but uh, he's got away with it. I think he hit this one somewhere near the splice. But he's such a powerful man, and he carried Deepish mid on. So just eight needed now to make Australia bat again. Doing a bit to luck, but uh, he's really having a lovely time, and so the crowd. Good Sunday league shot. This overslip, four runs all the way. This is what we were saying a little while ago. This is a perfect shot. He stays where he is, he doesn't pull that front leg away, and he hits it right in the middle, and England go into the lead. of all this, but I know what Ian both of these. But it's a marvellous game. And there is the 100 partnership between Ian Botham and Graham Dilly. In just 70 minutes, which of... If they haven't turned the match upside down, they've certainly turned the character of the match upside down. Attack by a, a man who's not just a, a, a fine prospect as a fast bowler, but obviously in the all-rounder class. And 
Graham Dilley currently top of the England batting averages in this series. as far as Australia are concerned no just that nagging feeling of doubt as well once Alderman decided that would uh, be his angle of attack. Complete change of angle there. It was always likely to non-plus the left hand out. But what a splendid knock that was from Graham Dilley. 56. Bold Alderman. And that gives uh, Alderman his fifth wicket. Fine performance again from him. Tail ender. I reckon Graham Dilly has uh, just slipped himself into the budding all rounder class. If he can bat like that once, then he can certainly do it again. He's done it before in other games in this series. And I suspect he just got a little inside edge on this. And an excellent piece of bowling by Terry Alderman. Moved a little bit into him off the seam. And into the leg stump and out she goes but a marvellous innings by Graham Dillick giving a great deal of pleasure to this very loyal Yorkshire crowd who just turned up here today when it appeared that England had absolutely no chance of getting even in front of Australia Five to five here now as uh, old plays that stroke away to the boundary to make the score 256 for eight. Every run really worth two to England now. 29 ahead, so it's uh, going to take probably something like 50 minutes to make those 29, and not all that much time left today. to be made and still another two wickets to fall. Then both are looking for that, let alone chasing it. It's gone straight into the confectionery stall and out again. Beautiful hit. What a wonderful follow through. Just look at the overall picture of today. 65 minutes to go, 10 minutes between innings, so 
England are getting close now to making it impossible for Australia to win the match today. And I hasten to say if Australia wins the match at all. But um, with Botham and Old scoring freely, there may not be enough time left, even if the Australians take these remaining two wickets in the next quarter of an hour. That's square, there's no man. There are men everywhere else. There's a long off, a deep point, a third man, a deep fine leg, and a deep mid-wicket, all of them on the boundary. The one unguarded spot is extra cover. That's a magnificent shot again. Tremendously strong. And it whistles through extra cover. Finished up at bale height. Really latched onto that. Ian Botham now, 91, faces Jeff Lawson. Shaft again. He didn't quite get it, but it's four. quite a, a thick edge but it was uh, certainly not um, in yeah. the middle but it went for four and it went very fast he's 95 yeah. it's a no ball and it's four 99 to both of them and that's as good as any stroke he's played all day by Ian Botham. 50 in the first innings, a century in the second and six wickets. A marvellous all-round performance to match some of the others he's produced for England. And a marvellous tribute as well from his teammates, all of whom have gathered. And Mike really is just giving him the word to stick around. Well, if he sticks around for too much longer, we'll be starting to think in terms of what might England's bowlers do on this pitch. His seventh Test match century, and he faced only 87 balls. 157 minutes, 1-6-90 in fours. It's his 14th first-class century. 103 not out. And a really marvellous piece of stroke play. Safe and four. Unorthodox but valuable. And up comes the 300 now. 301 for eight, and what a transformation. 104 to both and 25 to old. Uh, 
That's a good shot by Chris Earl. Four runs. So he's now looking confident and starting to get into the line to play those shots more orthodox fashion and he is a great striker of the ball. Did he get a touch on that? I think that he did. And if so, it was a desperately difficult chance. Yes, no signal from the umpire. So Rodney Marsh did very well to reach it. Really high, wide and handsome bouncer here. He and both of them ducking for cover and also getting a top edge. Marsh going absolutely full stretch and just didn't get enough glove to it. And both of them are old. Came together at 2.52 for eight. And it seems a long, long time ago that Ian Botham himself came to the wicket. And he's through. So Chris Old out for 29. He'd stayed there for 53 minutes and he'd prolonged this England counter-attack very effectively. But Lawson getting that vital breakthrough for Australia. Well, the leg stump Yorker, probably just the one he's been trying to find. Just the right one for Chris Old, who's inclined to give himself a little bit of room to play. So that's well. Bo Lawson has got this Yorker in his armory. He's used it very well. He had Peter Willie with it in the first innings and definitely deliberately bowled. Very fine bit of fast bowling. That one pass border. Superb shot. This has been a Leonine innings. Well, he had a nice practice the one before, so he was really ready for this and knew where he was hitting it. Safe. Yeah, doing his best, but he had no chance. And I would think that uh, as Hughes returns the ball to Lawson, he perhaps is saying no more short ones. Toss and where's it gone? Over to third man in the air for four runs. And it was very near to being what is called a beamer. straight at his head, which is an illegal ball now. Says so as much in the laws. And that looks like another one. And both of them is going to be content with one run. And Lawson I'm sure it wasn't deliberate, apologising to Ian Botham. Oh, another great shot.
It's safe. It's going up for his 25th four. And that is Ian Botham's highest test score. Surpassing the 137 he made on this ground against India two years ago. And it's done more than revive Ian Botham's career. It's positively revived this test series. Oh, magnificent strike. Four more runs. Lawson getting tired. bowling it down the wicket and Kim Hughes told him to pitch it up of an over before he said come on keep it up keep it up but he's probably too weary he can't get it up the other end and uh, these runs are keep peppering up on this scoreboard 123 ahead in all of the day the new ball will be due tomorrow and he's got the single he wanted so he'll have the strike in the morning this man who has become once again, a national hero. Conclusion of that famous day's play back in 1981. That was the fourth day's play. It's possible we can continue to show you the fifth day's play. Let's just find out how the inspection's gone on out there in the middle. Highlights of day one in the fourth test, now on BBC Two with Richie Benno.